Hello. So, um, the spreadsheet setup for experiment four is quite long and there's a lot of steps to it. So I thought I'd just make a video to show how it works. Um, so hopefully it won't be too long. I don't know if you've here, but, uh, I've got a friendly little frog up there in the wilderness. Ready to go through this with us. So, um, this is the sample data I gave. And really I'm just gonna go quickly through a bunch of the things we have to do to actually linearize and plot this data and then get some uh, 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 and then get a get an error for our for our fit. We're gonna fit it, and then we're gonna get an error for our fit. So, um, first thing we want to do is is make sure that this data like looks like a decaying exponential, right? So if I do that, I just highlight the data and uh, pick my scatter plot, and I look at it and. Indeed, this looks like a decaying exponential. So, so let's see what happens when we linear linearize it. <clears throat> so, when we linearize it, uh, I want to take the logarithm of my my x values because that's what appears in my equation when I linearize. So this is going to be the, the logarithm of x and t. So that's equal to, so there's a built-in function called ln in here, so I can get it, I can linearize it. Um, and you know, I can select this, take a look at it, and lo and behold, my data looks like a line. Uh, you can change your title up here if you want. Linearized data. Okay. Um, the next thing we want to do is put some error bars on this graph. So I'm going to call this uh, the uncertainty in this thing that I just calculated. I'm going to use square brackets. Okay. And the interesting thing about the uncertainty, we saw this, is that uh, you know you take the to get the uncertainty, you take the derivative of this function. And it turns out that the uncertainty is uh, equal to one divided by the value times the uncertainty in the value for this logarithm function. So we do that, drag it down, and you see the uncertainty. Even though all these uncertainties are the same. This uncertainty changes really wildly, right? It starts small and then it gets actually pretty big. Um, so let's actually add these, these, uh, this uncertainty to the graph. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go to chart design. I want to go to add element. I want to go to error bars and more error bars options. And uh, a bunch of error bars come up. And I want to go over to here, click over to the bar. And I want to click custom and specify value. And I want it to be both positive and negative. So my positive error values are going to be this. They're going to go plus. That. My negative are going to be the same negative going in the other direction. Our errors are symmetric at this point. Um, and I click it. And the one thing I want to do is just get rid of it. Automatically puts in horizontal error bars, but those aren't real. And so what I see is I get a graph with um, my error bars that that change as they go along. Uh, and you know the last thing I can do if I want, well not the last thing I do, but I, you know I can add a tread line. It's a straight line, so a linear fit. And I can display the equation, and I can get an actual like fit for this trend line. And you know, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Um, so, you know, when I compare a 0 0.202 to my slope, well, I know that this is actually one over the time constant, effectively. Uh, but what this hasn't given me is error 
at all, any of the error bars. Um, you, can, you can get error from this fit, but one of the things that Excel doesn't do is that this fit line, this best fit line, is only based on the data points and not based on the error bars at all. Like a proper fitting program would, would weight these points less than these points because you know it's way more uncertain about these points and these points are way more certain. Um, but Excel doesn't do that. Um, these numbers are super small. I'm sure you can change the font of them somewhere. But um, anyway, the so the last thing I want to do is just to add a fit line. So I'm going to add an M and a B. And I'm going to take, uh, so I'm, I want to add a line, but then I want to be able to adjust the line, just like we did in lab one, um, to get an error on this slope. And so I'm going to take from my M um, negative 0 0.202 and 1 1.7301. I'm going to take those as my starting values. I'll call this my model or something like that. And I just want to I just want to draw a line, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna generate a bunch of data points that are in a line where this is the slope and that's the y-intercept. And the way I do that is I. Uh, Click that cell, and I want to multiply it by the time, right? At that current time, then I want to add the y-intercept to it. Uh, the one thing I want to make sure is because these are fixed values, I'm going to drag and drop this down. Uh, I want h2 and h3 to stay the same during any dragging and dropping. So I drag it, and I get some, uh, I get some more data. So this data is a line that has the slope M and B, and I generate a point for all my times over here. Uh, so I'm gonna add that by uh, selecting data. I'm gonna add it, and I can call it model, I guess. I'm gonna add some X values, so my X values are time, right? Um, my Y values are the model I just generated. And looks good to me. And I get a bunch of I get a bunch of red dots right along that right along that line, right. Uh, so I wanna I wanna format this data series just so it looks a little different. So I hit the format button, and I go to my series that I just created model, and over here I get my format data series stuff. And I just want to go here, and I want to turn into a solid line, and I want to remove the marker. Um, yeah. So I have a solid line, and now what I can do is I, I can I can just fool around with this value, right? And it actually changing the slope changes this, and I can change it to like you know sort of get well you know that sort of goes through and it's sort of touching the error bars over here, uh, so that's pretty good. So this is my I might think is my maximum value for the slope, and if I do it the other way. I get something that I might think is my minimum value for the slope. Uh, and you know, max minus min divided by two, uh, because the edges of these error bars are the 68% confidence intervals for each of these points, then my my lines are essentially representative of 68% confidence intervals of, of, of my slope. Yeah, so I think uh, that's a pretty good overview. And uh, I'll stop it there. Thanks a bunch. Take care.